So what you need to be able to do is describe the advantages and disadvantages of using fuel cells compared to regular galvanic cells. Um, one of the advantages is as long as you're supplying fuel to the um, anode, you're going to generate electricity. Um, with a typical galvanic cell, as soon as your anode um, breaks up and is turned into its ions, then you can't use it anymore unless you recharge it. You're not burning fuel, so you're not generating uh, large amounts of heat necessarily from the combustion process. Um, the only product, if we're looking at a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, is water vapour, which is better for the environment um, than, I don't know, if you're using petrol, for example, better for the environment than the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, particulate soot, um, and some of them are being produced from a petrol engine. The other way of looking at it is compared to a galvanic cell, you're not, um, you're not throwing out a battery at the end of its use. You can reuse it as long as you can supply fuel to it. Hydrogen is very abundant. It's one of the most abundant elements, well, it is the most abundant element in the universe. And their efficiency compared to burning diesel or burning gas or burning petrol is really, really high. Again, this doesn't really relate to a galvanic cell, but you get more energy out uh, per gram of fuel um, from a fuel cell than you do from burning it. Um, disadvantages, since they run on hydrogen, if we're talking about a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, there's no really easy and efficient way of generating hydrogen. We have lots of water which contains hydrogen, but in order to get that hydrogen out, you have to put electricity in to break up the hydrogen away from the oxygen. And that requires energy to break it up, and then you don't get that amount of energy back when you use it in the fuel cell. Um, nothing is 100% efficient like that. Um, so that, just producing the hydrogen at the moment, oftentimes we just strip it off of uh, methane and other natural gases, and that's bad for the environment because it generates carbon dioxide anyway. Um, at the moment, it's very difficult to transport hydrogen because we don't have the infrastructure to do that. It's a gas, it's a very small gas, so it can leak out easily um, from containing, and it's also quite flammable. Um, so we need to have a distribution method to distribute hydrogen all around so it could be used very easily. Um, like I said, storage, it's a very small gas, so it leaks out um, but now from the gaps between whatever storage material, uh, medium you're using. So in a metallic tank, um, the hydrogen can leak out of the tank slowly over time. They're very expensive to produce fuel cells at the moment. They're a new technology. There's not really a big scale in terms of their production. So because of that, they're expensive to produce at the moment compared to, say, a galvanic cell. And it's a very... You know, it's a technology that's been around for a while, but it hasn't really progressed as far as we would like it to. Um, at the moment, we just can't use it in a way compared to using petrol to power a car or even using electricity in, bat in typical galvanic cells um, in electric cars. We don't have the distribution system to run it. The other thing we're going to talk about today is um, the nature of charging and discharging batteries. Um, the reason why batteries go flat, and this relates to our discussion about fuel cells, is because your anode... Um, gets corroded, it breaks down, and it goes into the electrolyte solution. So here we have our zinc copper Daniel cell that we made. Um, the zinc is the anode, so this is going to break it down into from zinc metal into zinc ions that will go into solution. And once that happens, you don't have a source of electrons anymore, so you're not going to generate electricity. So I've got a wonderful animation here which should show the um, anode disappearing. There it goes. So once the anode disappears, you don't have a source of electrons anymore, and the battery won't generate electricity. Now, the normal batteries you have in your devices don't look like this. They're not two cells connected like this at all. But the idea is the same. Uh, once the anode has been uh, broken down into its ions, um, it doesn't generate electricity anymore. So that's why your battery goes flat. Now, depending on the type of battery, they can be recharged. And the way that this is done is by reversing the current um, flowing into the cell. So the battery discharges um, and you have your anode being oxidized. If you put electricity in, you can reverse those reactions, so your anode, which was oxidized, can then be, the ions from the anode can be reduced back to a new anode, and then you can discharge your cell again and again. So if we look at our zinc copper cell here, um, I've got a little bit of anode left over. Um, I'm going to put in energy, and that's what this symbol here is, that's showing a battery. So I'm going to put in um, energy, and hopefully if my animation works, we should see the anode being rebuilt. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So what I'm doing is I'm turning the zinc ions from the solution back into solid zinc on my anode. By forcing the electrons the other direction, we're making what wasn't a uh, oxidation reaction, a reduction reaction. We're reducing the zinc ions to solid zinc to rebuild our anode. And once we've done that, we could reuse this again. Now, in your typical devices, you're, you're using a lithium-ion battery in your mobile phone, say, or your laptop. Um, but the idea is the same. Uh, you're putting in electricity when you're charging your battery. You're reversing the uh, typical reaction, which would be the oxidation of your anode. You're turning that into a reduction reaction to regenerate your anode.
So they are flipping science and looked at fuel cells and the charging and discharging of batteries. That's it for flipping science today. See ya.